Hey friend, it's Eddie Ortega. For the last about six-ish years, I've been on a big journey to really, really get in touch with watercolor painting. It's something that started out very innocently. It's just something that always felt completely outside of my reach. Like, I can't do it. it I'm, I'm too much of a control freak. I really thought that watercolors were, you know, this mystical medium that is only for uh, Hayao Miyazaki and other deities. <laughs> so... So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna take you on a journey because I have every single watercolor painting that I've ever made. And I think it would be really cool to look back through all of them and kind of show you how my paintings have grown, but also how my experience with painting has changed over time. I feel like watercolors are by far the most inspiring medium to me. I remember having this experience of wanting to control every aspect of the painting and thinking this is the only way I could express what's inside of me as if I have a really tight grip on how things work. And painting with watercolors has taught me so many things about relaxing and, and kind of trusting the process itself. So let's go. All right, listen, I don't have two cameras. Uh, I'm still a humble small channel, okay? So this is how we're gonna do it when we need to talk. So we're gonna start from the very beginning, from zero. So be patient, okay? We'll get to the really, really good stuff eventually. So, you know, the first ones are not so great, but uh, that's part of the journey. So let me show you what I got cooking. Dude, this was my very first attempt at watercolor, October 31, 2018. This was truly like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just, I'm gonna try something out. I'm blending all these colors. I just was confused, just exploring. Yeah, look at this. I didn't have any control of the medium, uh, but it's so fun to look at now because I, I remember thinking, I'm just never gonna figure this out. I also tried going out. I, I really wanted the experience of going out and painting in nature, which is something I've now made into a regular practice. But at the time, well, I would just go out and I'd try to paint an entire scene. I think what happened here was that I went out with a friend on a hike and I tried to draw this one boulder and I was just like, whoa, I have no idea how to even focus and so then I said I'm just gonna draw one little plant at a time and it just became this sort of I was just messing around with graphic shapes but not really painting what I was seeing and I did a little more of that and then here's another just confused attempt I mean I remember I was just painting this one tree and I was just like I don't know how to mix the paint I don't know how to get the colors I want and frankly I, I don't even know how to represent the subject matter and then in 2019, I went to Japan for the first time. It was my first trip to Japan. And I had one week by myself in Okinawa. And I was like, okay, I'm taking my watercolors. And by the way, at this time in my life, I don't yet understand, I don't yet have a relationship with this. This is me just being like, I, this is dumb. I spent probably three hours, you know, just staring at this one building, trying to paint it. And I remember feeling just like, well, I tried but it wasn't, it, it wasn't a pleasurable experience. I still felt like I was so caught up. A couple days later, I gave it one more attempt and that really was it. Now, after the trip, I came back and I was like, let's try again. So 10 days later, I sat down and I looked at a photo and I was like, I'm gonna go as slow as humanly possible. In all of these other pieces back here, even though I was taking a long time on them, I was not going slow. I've seen too many time-lapse videos and too much fast painting. And so I was just like, ah, I need to, I need to do it quick. And it was all this control thing. And then I got home and I was reflecting on the experience and I was just like, man, I'm just gonna do my best to paint this one scene. And I was really dialed in and listening to music and taking my time. And I painted this from a photograph and it was the first time that I looked at a watercolor painting and I said, wow, that's, that's awesome. The colors are vibrant and the shape of the Jeep is like correct-ish. This must have taken me the entire afternoon. And it's funny because I wrote in here, remember to take your time. You can make progress one light stroke at a time. It's okay to make up the details. Allow yourself to stray from the objective truth. Man, I just, I just love that this is my experience when I paint. I have these like deep thoughts sometimes. And for me, this was a deep observation because realizing that I'm not painting the truth. I'm trying to have my own relationship with the truth. And so, all right, then, <laughs> this is funny. Then I just tried to do it again. 
and this one just wasn't as successful. It's like lightning doesn't strike twice kind of thing. I was just like, okay, I've done it before and that did not work out. I, even though this uses the same colors and it uses the same subject matter, I was back to rushing it. I was just trying to kind of lay the details down in a very quick way. But you know, there's something that is a little bit successful about these paintings. There was a consistent aesthetic going on. So it was a step in the right direction. This was still 2019. And there's a couple other ones here that I, I attempted, but it, it just wasn't working out for me, so. Now, fast forward like two years. Now we're talking pandemic times. And we have this stack of drawings. Now let's just go through these relatively quickly. Still having the same experience. I don't understand color. I don't understand how to make them, the representations feel good. And still, I mean, it's kind of better, but the contrast is too high. My face is just like, it looks uh, forced. And then I decided to start trying to paint from media that I loved. So I have a bunch of Miyazaki art books. And so, uh, you know, I had to kind of get over some shame of just being like, oh, I shouldn't just draw straight from the books. And I was just like, well, why, why not? <laughs> right? So this was the first attempt. This was the second attempt. And in both of these, basically in all of these pieces, what I see is just actually doing too much. But as I kept looking through those paintings, I kept seeing how little he needed to express something like the clouds. So I started trying to emulate his clouds and realizing, oh, he's only using basically two colors. And I tried to do that for a little while. It kind of continued that way for a while. I just feel like for some reason you look at this and they don't have that free from the page feeling that I was chasing. But at least when I was doing these, I was just learning from one of my favorite uh, artists, like how do they do it? How how much is it really necessary? You know, realizing that I didn't need to have a bunch of different colors, that I didn't need to have a bunch of different complex shapes in the scene. And little by little, these started to get a little bit better. These are st still studies from Miyazaki books. I think this is from maybe Princess Mononoke, I, I, Castle in the Sky. No, these are all from uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky, of course. And again, at least I started to figure out like, what if I just use a monochrome scheme? And then we have this one over here. And this is a significant breakthrough for me. I was like, just one or two colors and using pen to just lightly touch the painting to, to sort of tie it together, right? After you lay down the splotches of color, just, just a little something to just further describe it, but not too much. It was a moment where I kind of understood, oh, this is something I can keep repeating and it'll work. And so I did. Now here are some from Porco Rosso. And I didn't use pen on this one, but it was the same kind of like, oh, all I gotta do is lay down the splotch of color and then put pencil over it and the whole thing kind of holds together. And it was like, whoa, that's, that was my first inkling of this is magical. Your brain kind of fills in the gaps. More Porco Rosso paintings, so I'm just gonna speed through these. But frankly, I just felt that they were quite good. I got into a flow of doing tons of them and I could crank out three or four in a night. You know, this is quite impressive. I, even to me, to this day, there's, there's a lot of more visual complexity, there's cohesion. Now, don't get it twisted. All of these paintings, they're still studies from a book in the sense that the image already existed. I was just looking at the image and trying to learn what I was seeing. And it was great, great study material because this is one of my most beloved painters or really artists, Miyazaki, right? And I love the way that his storyboards are all built with these kinds of watercolors. And then I just started to basically get really good at making replicas. And making replicas, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's not that there, I wasn't learning. I was learning a lot of things about value, about shape, about lightness, about touch. But I still have felt that I couldn't break free to really express my imagination, like what's going on inside me, and then just put it out into the page. We'll get there, we'll get there. Eventually this starts to change, but for now it was a mix of this was a really good one, this was a not so good one. <laughs> and I wrote in there, it's okay. And I remember I wrote that because I thought, man, this is really bad. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it's like, this one's not great. And then the next attempt is like, okay, we're really gonna dial it in. And then it really starts to happen. You start to kind of like understand like, okay, well, 
the values were too muddy, everything was too blue, everything was too saturated, and then I was like, bam, okay, it needs to be darker. I need to be less afraid of desaturating the image, and it actually looks more vibrant, surprisingly. Um, so I was learning the, the techniques, you know? And then yet another one, and I think I was losing inspiration with the whole process now. It's like, okay, I could look at a Miyazaki image and I could kind of copy it, and I've learned so much. And I kept doing that for a while. Here's one that was a character study, and frankly, this one didn't go so well. And like, I don't know, I just, it was hit or miss is what I'm trying to say. Some were good, some were not so hot. Here's a, another little random page that I did with my buddy. But that's basically what this one year run, this must have been, let's see, this spans from, actually, so this was just about a month of work. So that's my journeyman times. <sighs> Lacking some kind of guidance and not having a teacher, a mentor, I felt that the most useful thing I could do was, first of all, and this is the what I would say is my first tip, is find a way to just have fun. Even those early drawings that were not going so well, I was just like, well, I need to enjoy it. And, and I talk about that a lot in this channel because it was really a lesson that I, has taken me a very long time to learn and I still forget from time to time. But once I learned to enjoy the process, then the next tip became, I need to look at the work that I love and figure out how to break it down, decompose it into its elements so I could start to learn them. And I feel like I really got that out of that experience. At the time, I was just like, well, this is just what I can do. These aren't my own original work, but I was quite proud of them. And it was a lot of fun to do. It was a very um, calming experience to just make uh, really chill little watercolor paintings. So let me show you the next cluster of paintings now. Now I must have taken a super long break because for almost six more months, I think I was just like, ah, I'm kind of done with that. Oh, and I was also moving. I remember now I was moving in San Francisco because I'd gone through this big breakup. And this was when I had finally settled into my new studio. So this is still just a study from an image from Miyazaki, but damn, clearly something stuck together, something congealed. This is monochrome and it's basically a study in value. It's, it's a study in light peeking through the back and backlighting these figures. I loved it. What's next? It just basically stays consistent. So at this point, I'm starting to get used to this quality being what I can produce. Yeah, and then <laughs> problem remains though. I went outside and it just doesn't translate. It's just like, you look at it and it's like, doesn't have the airiness, the focus, it just feels muddy and complicated. I still didn't have an understanding for the approach to the painting. It's not so much the materials anymore, it's how do I make smart choices about what to keep and what to leave out. So let's see. Yep, and it happened again. I was like, I'm gonna draw the trees. I, it wasn't working and then I put all this pencil on top of it, uh, you know, not working and you know, after this painting in August of 2021, I stopped trying and I didn't do any more of these kinds of paintings for quite a good while. I guess that one failure really took me out in this case. All right, now check this out. This was actually a piece that I did also paint outside and I feel much better about this one. I don't know what happened with all the time in between, but something must have clicked because when I came back to this, I remember looking at the scene and thinking, you have to say it with less. Not like the shape of every leaf, you know, like back in this war, but more like, what is the general shape and the general vibe? I feel like this was much closer to, to that uh, airiness that I've, that I've come to appreciate in watercolor. So that was great. Yeah, and so then, this is actually a completely different day, but the aesthetic stuck through. When I look at it, I'm like, ah, you know, like it's relaxing, you know? I think I was really coming into an experience of just being like, I'm just gonna let it guide me a little bit. And it sounds a little mystical, but it really is kind of the experience that you get into the more that you go through this journey. So I don't know if you're worried out there and you think that it can't happen, just remember. <laughs> All right, so how are you doing out there? I, I recognize this video is on the long side, but I hope you're having fun. I'm really learning a lot from it. So in recap, this whole period was just me kind of figuring out how to use the material, 
And the big, big lesson that I got out of it is, it's totally cool to look at the work of other people that you love and admire and try to break it down and figure out what makes it tick, what makes it awesome. Knowing that, I now understand that this next chapter has everything to do with learning how to actually combine my observational skills, my material skills, and my imagination. So that's what this next set of paintings is kind of about. Let's start with this one. I have been working on a comic book world type thing. That is a long-term project that you should follow me in this channel if you wanna know more about. But um, this was one of the first images where I was just like, I'm gonna challenge myself and I'm going to just make an image that feels like it's from another world, from a, a place in my head. I went back to some photographs that I took in Japan uh, four years earlier, prior, and I was like, I'm gonna try to transmogrify them. I'm gonna try to shape them into something that's imaginary. And this is where that whole thing about using reference and using your imagination in the moment comes together. But this was an image that felt intentional. Now, to be very, very transparent, this image went through some changes. This was actually the first version of it, okay? So it was just like me trying to figure it out. Color scheme wasn't right, but the composition was the right idea. And then I was like, let me try it again. And I did this one, which was a painting from the actual photograph that, that I was referencing. And then it all kind of synthesized to this. So now we're really cooking, we're really onto something here. And I feel like that kind of just unlocked something for me. So this is just another image. This one actually came from life. Then I took it home and I just colored it in later. And this image by itself isn't that complex, but it's way more interesting to look at. And it's something that's coming from a combination of factors now. And then it happened again. Yeah, I really feel like this is what started to happen for me is something must have connected because now I'm pumping out these images that are partially imaginary, partially the real world, and overall my self-expression. And that is awesome to me. Like this was, we went out to brunch with a friend and I sketched said friend in the moment. So this was all black and white and it was just a sketch, a pencil sketch. And then later I went home and I was just like, I need to give this color and it has a color scheme and it has variety and it has lightness. There's an image beyond the image, so to speak. And now this image is an experiment from the same day. This was from the same day, but I colored it differently. I just wanted more striking comic book graphic vibe. And I don't think this is quite it but I feel like this image is sort of like this image. It's it's on the way to something, but I, I honestly, I haven't revisited it. But when I look at this, I can, I feel that I am peering into a world of its own. I know that this place is the same as this place and this place. I feel like these are all in the same universe. And that feels really refreshing to me. That feels really exciting. Now for something different. This image continues the exploration. I'm trying to figure out how people in this imaginary world look like. I wanted to do something that's even like more abstract. I actually love this painting because it just suggests more, at least for me personally, and it makes me believe that I have the capacity to actually flesh out this imaginary universe. So I started to get quite experimental. This is now April, so it's a month later. So this one actually came before it. You know, I won't get into what the meaning of it is, but I was trying to experiment with something more fragmented. So again, maybe this isn't the image, but it's on its way to something. I could see the developments of something blossoming. Here's a, another experiment I did around the same theme. And this was about using primary colors alone to communicate a sort of high striking graphic aesthetic. I call them distortions. There's these 
baddies in this world that I'm creating and they're like hallucinations or something. And I think they would have this very striking kind of almost brutal aesthetic. And, and somehow I'm able to convey that with just watercolor. And something's coming is what I feel. All right, friend, and that is it. So this journey with watercolor painting has been one of the most satisfying things I've done artistically and kind of in my life, to be honest. It became, it started as this thing that was a curiosity and then it's become a, a, a safe haven at times of my life, an excuse to get out into the world and, and try to capture it. And, and even a, a vehicle for, for expressing my imagination and exploring my imagination doing something that was enjoyable to me. There isn't a, a marketable quality to this. I, I'm from the video game development world and it's all about 3D. It's all about commercial, professional work. And, and watercolor for me has been about escaping from all of that. And yet it's produced some of the art that is most gratifying for me. And I think also for the people that I share it with. So. I couldn't let you go without uh, showing you the materials real quick. It's very simple. The craziest part is I've only used two things. A little Cotman kit and a water brush. I plan on making a different video to talk about my minimalist setup and hopefully that's something that people would like to watch. But ultimately the experience of going from uptight and controlling and it needs to be exactly what I want it to be has transformed for me into this sort of it's almost like a relationship with life itself. It's like, okay, maybe it's going this way. Maybe it's going that way. We'll see. That's what watercolors have taught me. A sort of that the thing that makes watercolors look free comes from the same place as learning to be free while I'm making the art, if that makes sense. Learning how to be less attached to it being good or not good. And then that sort of thing I'm always talking about. All right, I, I hope you've enjoyed that. This was really gratifying for me to share. I would love it if you would drop a comment, if you have insights or thoughts, or if you wanna let me know how that made you feel, <laughs> you know? Um, and I would love it if you subscribe to this channel. I am an artist and a game developer, and I love exploring art in general and sharing what I'm learning and chronicling my journey. And this is one version of doing that. So thanks for watching, thanks for your time. I appreciate you. And if you're thinking about doing watercolors, I'm here to tell you, you should just get started. You should totally do it. And it's a lot of fun. Okay. Now, what will I do with these watercolors next? Well, we didn't end up covering that in this video, but I have some projects in mind. So stay tuned. I'll share more about that on my channel in due time. Ciao.